there he is. That ladies and gentlemen, Bigfoot himself. Bigfoot made him do it. Hello, all of my fabulous, beautiful people, and how are you all doing today? I hope that you are all doing very, very, very well. So today, I actually want to look into Bigfoot because there's kind of a funny article out that I wanted to read to you. And then we're just going to talk about Bigfoot for a minute because I think that that's fun and it's pseudoscience-y and weird, and we can have kind of a laugh about some things today. So without further ado, let's just roll the intro and then get right into it. here in the Toronto Sun. Gotta love Canada. And it says, Oklahoma man allegedly kills fishing buddy and then blames Bigfoot. I know it has a little bit of a dark connotation on it, but you know, if you know me, you, you know that that's pretty normal here. But I do want to talk about this just because, and, and by the way, we're not making fun of his mental health. I'm not doing that. I do believe that he obviously has some mental health issues and that's why it became a murder. However, I just want to talk about this because it's like, imagine believing in Bigfoot this much, okay? And then we're going to get into what the hell Bigfoot is just for fun because I want to. So it says here, Bigfoot made him do it. Dun, dun, dun. Oh wait, I have that. <laughs> An Oklahoma man allegedly killed his friend while they were fishing because he thought his pal was going to feed him to Bigfoot. Larry Doyle Sanders, who's 53, and Jimmy Glenn Knighton were noodling, which is barehanded fishing, in the South Canadian River last Saturday when the two men got into an altercation, according to the arrest affidavit obtained by the Oklahoman. Sanders claimed that Knighton intended to feed him to a Sasquatch slash Bigfoot. <gasps> and that was actually in the affidavit. Sanders instead tried to get away so that the Sasquatch couldn't eat Knighton and in what appeared to be an eat or be eaten scenario. The suspect punched and struck the victim then choked him to death. Knighton's body was found the following day after, along with Sanders' confession, he also drew a map and detail to investigators where he left his friend. Pontotoc County deputies were alerted to Knighton's death on Saturday by the mother of Sanders' daughter, who said her daughter claims Sanders had killed Knighton. Oh, this poor daughter. When a deputy arrived at his home, he seemed unable to remain still, the affidavit said. He appeared to be under the influence of something, which is what Sheriff John Christian told K-10 about Sanders. Sanders was charged with first-degree murder, and he remains in the Pontotoc County Jail. So now, of course, let's go right to the source. This is the Oklahoman, which, of course, this is the place. Originally did the report, so we want to check that out. It says that Sanders was interviewed Sunday at the Pontotoc County Jail, which, by the way, these reports came out near the beginning of July, so it's been a few weeks now since this happened. Apparently, Sanders and Knighton left Saturday afternoon for the South Canadian River to go noodling, and then he was arrested on an outstanding warrant Saturday when he came back to Knighton's residence alone and told his daughter about the killing. It's time for all of us to take a moment 
join one another down and they so what the heck is bigfoot most people are aware with what bigfoot is but i just thought it would be fun if we just took a minute and just kind of dug into some information about bigfoot so bigfoot is also commonly referred to as sasquatch and it's an ape-like creature that apparently lives in the forests of north america a lot of people have claimed to see this creature but the majority of mainstream scientists have historically discounted the existence of Bigfoot. It is considered to be a result of a combination of folklore, misidentification, and a hoax, rather than a real living animal. A lot of people can actually trace the phenomenon of Bigfoot to a combination of factors and sources, including indigenous cultures, the European wild man figure, and other folk tales. Wishful thinking, a cultural increase in environmental concerns, and overall societal awareness of the subject have also been cited as additional factors to the belief in this creatures. Apparently in the southeastern United States, they believe in something called the skunk ape. That sounds interesting. And in Australia, they have the yowl, and in Asia, it's Yeti. But Yeti. So according to Live Science, there have been over 10,000 reported Bigfoot sightings in the continental United States. And it's funny because one third of all claims of seeing this Bigfoot come from the Pacific Northwest. And then the rest are just kind of spread out all over North America. I found this absolutely amazing article by the Smithsonian, which basically goes into why do so many people still want to believe in Bigfoot? So I thought that we would go through this article, have some fun with it. They talk about some of the sightings, and then afterwards we would go back to Wikipedia and have a discussion about the real explanation for what people could be seeing. And then we'll just kind of have a little discussion about how sad it is that this guy thought that he saw this thing and then murdered his friend to close this up because, man, that sucks. All right, let's do this. So why do so many people still want to believe in Bigfoot? The appeal of the mythical wild man holds strong. And yes, I know this is from September 2018. However, the last real sighting of Bigfoot was in 2018, so, it works, okay? Information still relevant today. 60 years ago this fall, Bigfoot first stepped into the public consciousness. Giant footprints puzzled residents, a headline in the Humboldt Times announced. The small Northern California newspaper reported that a road construction crew had discovered human-like footprints that were a massive 16 inches long. The paper was the first to give the mysterious animal that made the prints its memorable moniker, Bigfoot. And the creature has been stomping through the American imagination ever since. Ooh, I like the way this is written. Today, the legendary beast seems to be everywhere. You will find Bigfoot looking awfully cute this year in two children's films, The Son of Bigfoot and Smallfoot. Both extremely cute. My daughter loves them, just gonna say. Animal Planet recently aired the finale of its popular series, Finding Bigfoot, which lasted 11 seasons, despite never making good on the promise of its title. And the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization lists at least one report from every state except Hawaii over the past two decades. I got sirens going on outside. One moment. Hashtag city life. Most recent sighting of Bigfoot, and this is the last one that I could find, by the way, was in June 2018, and it was by a woman in Florida who reported a creature that looked like a large pile of soggy grass. Other evidence in the database includes supposed Bigfoot scat, nests, and noises. If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, it may not make a sound, but it seems someone will report that a Bigfoot knocked it over. <laughs> I do greatly enjoy this magazine's humor about the topic. Interest in the existence of the creature is at an all-time high. The paleontologist Darren Nash, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, has observed, even though there's nothing even close to compelling as goes the, the evidence. Uh-huh. Of course, Bigfoot is not the first fabled 
hominid to roam North America. Sasquatch has long populated the mythologies of American Indian tribes in the Pacific Northwest. But those 1958 footprints transformed the myth into a media sensation. The tracks were planted near Bluff Creek in Northern California by a man named Ray Wallace. But his prank was not revealed until his death in 2002, when his children said it had all been just a joke. True story, hilarious. By that point, more important evidence had entered the Bigfoot file. So, you know, it didn't really matter that the guy admitted it was a joke. They still had proof, apparently. In 1967, Roger Patterson and Bob Jimlin filmed a few seconds of a hairy creature walking on two legs by the same Bluff Creek, the most famous and contested piece of Bigfoot evidence to this very day and still to today as in like today, the day that you're watching this video. That the patterson Jimlin film was created in the same place that Wallace had staged his hoax is just one reason to doubt its authenticity. Skeptics say, I'm a skeptic, hi, that animal was a man in costume, while believers argue that the creature's movements and body proportions cannot possibly have been human. His acting doesn't exist, I guess. The debate has been raging for half a century, which raises a question of its own. How is it that the evidence has not gotten any better despite the potential increase in the quantity and quality of cameras? <laughs> Good question there, Benjamin Radford. I'm with you on that. And he's a research fellow with the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. How do I join that committee? So, of course, this is the famous video, and I feel like I would be doing us all a very great disservice if I did not play this right now. You can let me know if you believe this to be real. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Bigfoot himself in 1967 just going for a hike. Oh my, I'm going to get seasick. Not really sure what this camera stuff's about, but we are in 1967. We have time traveled. I hear apparently I'm very good at doing that. And this is what they recorded. And this was the equipment they had to record it on at that time. But it is a little suspect that we haven't come up with quote-unquote better evidence on video since. Now he looks like he's dancing, okay? Like, we could do some dance moves like... Do the Bigfoot dance! Okay, sorry, I'm done. I think we got the picture. Uh, this here, this is Bigfoot. What they say. Oh my god, now you know the kind of stuff I watch. See? Now you- maybe now you know what's wrong with me. Still, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence either. Right? It depends who you ask, I guess. Wild animals don't exactly mug for photos, and the planet's ever-shrinking forests still regularly unpack surprises, such as the Saola. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong an untamed cousin of the cow that was discovered by scientists in Vietnam in 1992. But the Saola did not have legions of amateurs hunting it with cameras. With or without hard evidence, many people clearly want to believe in Bigfoot, which suggests we are dealing more with human imagination than human evolution. Yes, because there are a lot of people out here that believe in Bigfoot and do believe that Bigfoot is kind of a part of our human evolution because those of us that believe in evolution believe that we came from apes. And my daughter will tell you that at the age of seven, she will say, humans came from apes, mom. So they think that it is like as if somehow the evolution stopped on this creature 
And it's like a part of our ancestors from way back when we were very hairy apes. Naish has written that Bigfoot is the modern American manifestation of a human-wide cultural concept, not a zoological reality. It has much in common with the Australian Yowie and the Himalayan Yeti, an upright posture, shaggy hair, and of course, large feet. As so-called wild men, they hold a crude mirror up to our own species. What might Homo sapiens be like if civilization had not removed it from nature? It's an interesting question because I would argue that we're seeing that right now on YouTube. Ha 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 ha. Fact or folklore? Can you tell the real animals from the fake ones? Hover over each animal to reveal if it's fact or folklore. Fact. Fact. Folklore. Fact. Folklore. Cool. Some people see these crypto-humanoids as symbols of pure freedom, living by instinct and foiling every effort to pin them down. To search for Bigfoot in the forest is to taste that freedom. On the trail, you become extra attuned to nature, the smell of scat, the sounds of breaking branches, the curious impressions in the dirt. As long as there are wild places in America, Bigfoot remains a possibility that, to its most ardent opponents, cannot be disproved. And that's the thing is that you you can't prove it's not real either, right? Because you can't really prove a negative. So that's kind of how this story stays alive. The hunt for Bigfoot emulates an earlier mode of discovery when new knowledge was not the product of advanced degrees and expensive machinery, but rather curiosity, bravery, patience, and survival. In the 19th century, the American landscape revealed its majesties to ordinary settlers pushing westward into territory unmapped by, by Europeans. To track Bigfoot today is to channel that frontier spirit as well as to appropriate Native American traditions. Bigfoot also embodies other less romantic but no less enduring American traits like gullibility and a hunger for attention. There are so many fake videos, says Lauren Coleman, who is the founder of the International Cryptozoology Museum in Portland, Maine. Say that 10 times fast. The problem has grown worse with social media, where viral hoaxes, like drone footage of a supposed Bigfoot in a clearing in Idaho, can rack up millions of views. Yes, on places like YouTube here. Coleman, for his part, believes there is evidence for Bigfoot's existence, but he and his like-minded peers find it difficult to focus attention on this material amid the growing number of obvious shams. Technology has ruined the old cryptozoology, Coleman says. His complaint echoes concerns in more mainstream American life, where technologies that promise to build consensus have, in fact, made the truth more difficult than ever to discern. Yep. On the internet, Bigfoot has found a habitat much more hospitable than North American forests. It turns out that Bigfoot does not need to exist in order to live forever. Because like I said, you can't prove the negative either. The Iceman cameth! He cameth, he saweth, and he conquereth! Sorry. The amazing story of the infamous frozen missing link from Minnesota and the dog scientist hot on its tail. November 1968, there was this incredible discovery. Showman Frank Hansen exhibits the Iceman, a Bigfoot-like creature encased in ice, at the International Livestock Exposition in Chicago. This relic of the Ice Age, he claims, was found in the waters off Siberia. The news soon reaches Ivan T. Sanderson of the Society for the Investigation of the Unexplained. December of 1968, the reality test. Sanderson and Bernard Huvelmans of the Royal Institute of Natural Sciences of Belgium examined the creature in a trailer in Minnesota. We consider this to be a genuine and unique example of a most priceless specimen. Sanderson writes to John Napier, director of primate biology at the Smithsonian, which is the magazine that we're reading this all from. 
but they have the museum. So this is the, the magazine of the Smithsonian Museum. Winter 1969, The Missing Lake. It says, is it real? At some dates, business was so good for Frank Hansen's cyber scoy creature, wife Irene had to open a second ticket box to handle the crowds. At right, kids gape at the frozen thing. Hansen's done fine with it. In a scientific journal, Hill of Bins declares he had discovered a new species of man, which is was called Homo pongoids. Napier decides to investigate. The Smithsonian feels they have an obligation not only to science, but to the general public to determine for themselves the significance of this specimen. Hansen won't let them see the body. Hmm, that's a little bit suspicious. In April 1969, the FBI to Smithsonian. Good luck. Here we have the Department of Justice, Federal Bureau of Investigations. The Smithsonian appeals to FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover for help. Hoover declines, citing, and he's a very, very famous FBI director, by the way, the absence of a violation of a federal law within our investigative jurisdiction. Napier reports that U.S. Customs will look into it. The body, after all, was supposedly imported. Meanwhile, Hansen puts a model of the specimen on display. May 1969, hooray for Hollywood! Without access to the body, Napier Studios, photos and videos. The Smithsonian also calls Hollywood prop houses and finds one that admits it created the ice bin in 1967. In other words, it was a fake. The Smithsonian announced it. It is satisfied that the creature is simply a carnival exhibit made of latex rubber and hair. Today, the creature lives at Austin's Museum of the Weird. That's some of the apparent evidence of Bigfoot in the past. So now let's just have some fun and let's go through the proposed explanations of what Bigfoot actually is. What do people actually think it is? Let me know down below what you actually believe out of these proposed explanations to be the real explanation. Misidentification. Bears. Roar! Sorry. Mainstream scientists theorize that American black bears are a likely culprit for most Bigfoot sightings, particularly when observers view a subject from afar or in dense foliage or there are poor lighting conditions. Additionally, black bears have been observed and recorded walking upright, often as the result of an injury. While upright, adult black bears stand roughly 1.5 to 2.5 meters, which is 5 to 7 feet, and grizzly bears are roughly 2.4 to 2.7 meters, which is 8 to 9 feet, both within the range of anecdotal Bigfoot reports. In 2007, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization put forward photos which they stated showed a juvenile Bigfoot. The Pennsylvania Game Commission, however, stated that the photos were of a bear with mange. The Pennsylvania Game Commission unsuccessfully attempted to locate the suspected mangy bear. Scientist Vanessa Woods, after estimating that the subject in the photo had approximately 650 millimeters, 22 inch long arms, and a 476 millimeters, which is 18.75 inch torso, concluded it was more comparable to a chimpanzee. Which leads us to escaped apes! Some have proposed that sightings of Bigfoot may simply be people observing and misidentifying known great apes such as chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans that have escaped from captivity such as zoos, circuses, and private owners. Because yes, there are some people out there that have monkeys as pets. Ross did from Friends. This explanation is often proposed in relation to the Bigfoot-like skunk ape, as some argue the humid subtropical climate of the southeastern United States could potentially support a population of escaped apes. I mean, possibly. Humans! Humans have been mistaken for Bigfoot with some incidents that actually have led to injuries. And this is kind of sad because here we're talking about humans that are mistaken for Bigfoot. But today's story was about a man that murdered a human 
just because he thought that that guy was going to feed him to Bigfoot. I don't know what drama they had with each other, but it's a little bit different. Still really sad. In 2013, a 21-year-old man in Oklahoma was arrested after he told law enforcement he accidentally shot his friend in the back while their group was allegedly hunting for Bigfoot. In 2017, a shamanist wearing clothing made of animal furs was va vacationing in a North Carolina forest when local reports of alleged Bigfoot sightings flooded in. The Grenville Police Department issued a public notice not to shoot Bigfoot in fear of someone in a fursuit mistakenly being injured or killed. In 2018, a person was shot at multiple times by a hunter near Helena, Montana, who claimed he mistook him for Bigfoot. Additionally, some have attributed feral humans or hermits living in the wilderness as being another explanation for alleged Bigfoot sightings. One famous story, The Wild Man of the Navidad, tells of a wild ape man who roamed the wilderness of eastern Texas in the mid-19th century, stealing food and goods from local residents. A search partly allegedly captured an escaped African slave who was attributed to the story. During the 1980s, a number of psychologically damaged American Vietnam veterans were stated by the state of Washington Veterans Affairs Directors Randy Fisher to have been living in remote wooded areas of the state. God, I'm not going to get this word right. Paraidolia. Some have proposed that that word may explain Bigfoot sightings, specifically the tendency to observe human-like faces and figures within the natural environment. Photos and videos of poor quality alleged to depict Bigfoots are often attributed to this phenomenon and commonly referred to as blob squatch. Hoaxes. Both Bigfoot believers and non-believers agree that many of the reported sightings are hoaxes or misidentified animals. Author Jerome Clark argues that the Jacko affair was a hoax involving an 1884 newspaper report of an ape-like creature captured in British Columbia. He cites research by John Green, who found that several contemporaneous British Columbia newspapers regarded the alleged capture as highly dubious and notes that the mainland guardian of New Westminster, British Columbia, wrote, Absurdity is written on the face of it. In 1968, the frozen corpse of a supposed hair-covered hominid measuring 5 feet 11 inches, 1.8 meters, was paraded around the United States as part of a traveling exhibition. Many stories surfaced as to its origin, such as it having been killed by hunters in Minnesota or killed by American soldiers near Da Nang during the Vietnam War. It was attributed by some to be proof of Bigfoot-like creatures. Primatologist John R. Napier studied the subject and concluded it was a hoax made of latex, one we talked about earlier. Others disputed this, claiming Napier did not study the original subject. As of 2013, the subject, dubbed the Minnesota Iceman, is on display at the Museum of the Weird, which is in Austin, Texas. Tom Biscardi, longtime Bigfoot enthusiast and CEO of Searching for Bigfoot, Inc., yes, that exists, appeared on the Coast to Coast AM paranormal radio show on the 14th of July in 2005 and said that he was 98% sure that his group will be able to capture a Bigfoot, which they had been tracking in the Happy Camp, California area. That sounds like a fun area, Happy Camp. A month later, he announced on the same radio show that he had access to a captured Bigfoot and was arranging a pay-per-view event for people to see it. He appeared on Coast to Coast AM again a few days later to announce that there was no captive Bigfoot. He blamed an unnamed woman for misleading him and said that the show's audience was gullible. You know, he, he apparently wasn't gullible or anything. On July 9th of 2008, Rick Dyer and Matthew Witten posted a video to YouTube claiming that they had discovered the body of a dead Bigfoot in a forest in northern Georgia. Tom Biscardi was contacted to investigate. Dyer and Witten received $50,000 from Searching for Bigfoot, Inc., the story was covered by many major news networks, including BBC, CNN, ABC News, and Fox News. Soon after a press conference, the alleged Bigfoot body was delivered in a block of ice in a freezer with the Searching for Bigfoot team. 
When the contents were thawed, observers found that the hair was not real, the head was hollow, and the feet were rubber. Dyer and Witten admitted that it was a hoax after being confronted by Steve Coolis, executive director of SasquatchDetective.com. Everyone just messing with these people that believe in Bigfoot. In August of 2012, a man in Montana was killed by a car while perpetrating a Bigfoot hoax using a ghillie suit. In January of 2014, good old Rick Dyer again, because he just loves doing this apparently, perpetrator of the previous Bigfoot hoax said that he had killed a Bigfoot in December of 2012 outside San Antonio. He claimed to have had scientific tests conducted on the body from DNA tests to 3D optical scans to body scans. It is the real deal. It's Bigfoot and Bigfoot's here and I shot it and now I'm proving it to the world. He said that he had kept the body in a hidden location and he intended to take it on tour across North America in 2014. <laughs> he released photos of the body in a video showing a few individuals' reactions to seeing the body, but he never released any of the tests or scans. He refused to disclose the test results or to provide biological samples. He said that the DNA results were done by an undisclosed lab and could not be matched to identify any known animal. Dyer said that he would reveal the body and test on February 9th of 2014 at a news conference at Washington University, but he never made the test results available. After the Phoenix tour, the Bigfoot body was taken to Houston. On March 28th of 2014, Dyer admitted on his Facebook page that his Bigfoot corpse was another hoax. He had paid Chris Russell of Twisted Toy Box to manufacture the prop from latex phone and camel hair, which he nicknamed Hank. Hank the Bigfoot. Dyer earned approximately $60,000 US from the tour of the second bi fake Bigfoot corpse. He stated that he did kill a Bigfoot, but did not take the real body on tour for fear that it would be stolen. You know, he has it. He has it somewhere. It's just he, he didn't want to take take it out with him, you, you know. That, that, that sounds legit. In April of 2002, a man in Mobile, Alabama, posted photos he claimed were of a Bigfoot to his Facebook page, indicating the Mobile County Sheriff's Office validated their authenticity and the team from Finding Bigfoot was being dispatched. I'm so sorry, I don't know why I turned Southern there. Alabama. The photos circulated on social media, attracting the attention of NBC15. The man admitted the photos were an April Fool's Day hoax. On July 7th of 2002, wildlife educator and media personality Coyote Peterson released a post on Facebook in which he claimed to have discovered a large primate skull in British Columbia, indicating that he had excavated and smuggled the skull into the U.S. for dermatologist review. He further claimed to have initially hidden the discovery due to concerns that government agencies may intervene. The post went viral, quickly garnering the attention of multiple scientists who dismissed the skull as likely a replica of a gorilla skull. Darren Nash, a vertebrate paleontologist, stated, I'm told that Coyote Peterson does this sort of thing fairly often as clickbait, and that this is a stunt done to promote an upcoming video. Maybe this is meant to be taken as harmless fun, but in an age where anti-scientific feelings and conspiracy culture are a serious problem, it, again, really isn't a good look. I think this stunt has backfired. Isn't that stuff such a serious problem? That's why I'm here. Gigantopithecus. Yep, probably said that wrong, but I tried. Bigfoot proponents Grover Krantz and Jeffrey H. Bourne both believe that Bigfoot could be a relic population of the extinct Southeast Asian ape species, whatever that is, Blackie. According to Bourne, G. Blackie may have followed the many other species of animals that mi migrated across the Bering Land Bridge to the Americas. The Americas! To date, none of the fossils of this animal have been found in the Americas. In Asia, the only recovered fossils have been of mandibles and teeth, leaving uncertainty about G. Blackie's locomotion. Locomotion. Krantz has argued that G. Blackie could have been bipedal 
based on his extrapolation from the shape of its mandible. However, the relevant part of the mandible is not present in any fossils. The more popular view is that G. Black E was quadrupedal. Quadrupedal. As its enormous mass would have made it difficult for it to adopt a bipedal gait. The trouble with this account is that Gigantopithecus was not a humanin and maybe not even a crown group hom hominoid. Yet the physical evidence implies that Bigfoot is an upright biped with buttocks and a long stout, permanently adducted hollux. These are hominin. Autopomorphies not found in other mammals or other bipeds. It seems unlikely that this animal would have evolved these uniquely hominin traits in parallel. Or it could also be an extinct hominidae. Hominidae. That's also coming from John R. Napier. But they do say that the fossils of the Paranthropus are found only in Africa. Some suggest Neanderthal, Homo erectus, or Homo heidelbergensis to be the creature, but like all other great apes, no remains of any of those species have been found in the Americas. So apparently the expert consensus is that allegations of the existence of Bigfoot are not credible science. Belief in the existence of such a large ape-like creature is more often attributed to hoaxes, confusion, or delusion rather than to sightings of a genuine creature. In a 1996 USA Today article, Washington State zoologist John Crane said, there is no such thing as Bigfoot. No data other than material that's clearly been fabricated has ever been presented. So my conclusion personally on Bigfoot is that it appears to be a bunch of hoaxes that then makes other people believe in it. And as we know, there are some people out there that will hold on to a belief system forever despite the evidence being presented to them that this thing is not real. It appears the man that unfortunately murdered his friend while they were fishing has this really great, great belief. And there is nothing that could stop someone from believing in something like this so heavily because like I said, once they get that conspiracy theory into their head, you cannot prove a negative. So oftentimes, they themselves have to find something on their own that kind of stops that delusion, that belief, right? They cannot depend on other people kind of presenting evidence in order to do so. I'm unsure of the drama that happened between these two. I did try to find more information. This was reported on July the 12th, and I have been searching for some more information to see if anyone has found out of the drama between these two as friends. It appears that nobody has reported any drama publicly, but they were obviously in a fight as friends, and for whatever reason, this one man thought that his friend would feed him to Bigfoot, and his belief in Bigfoot was so powerful, and he was so horrified of it, that to him, it was better to murder his friend than possibly be beaten fed to Bigfoot. And that just goes to also show how a belief like this, although it seems harmless, can then lead to something that's more dangerous. And that's why these people out here, like Mr. Dwyer there, that does the hoaxes, that shit's not cool. Don't do that. Don't feed the beast, if you will. For now, I choose to believe that Bigfoot is not real. It's a mixture of hoax and people wanting to tell a really fun story about a hairy dude that lives out in the woods. And it's a very big shame to me that there are people out here that are willing to believe in it so much that other people can get hurt by them or they hurt other people because they mistaken them for Bigfoot. So. That's why these belief systems can be dangerous. I really do hope that this man just goes to jail for the murder and then gets the mental health help that he needs because he obviously needs some. And I am so sorry to the family who lost someone over this, but I did want to kind of take a sad story 
and then look into Bigfoot. How real could it be? And then again, just have a little discussion about how something like this can happen when somebody believes in something so freaking heavily that they're willing to, like I said, harm someone in real life over a belief system. That's never okay. And as a society, we definitely have to figure out how to reel those things in and try to stop things like that from happening in future. Let me know down below what you think about Bigfoot. Do you think Bigfoot's real? I'm not going to judge you if you do. Just give me a reason why you think he's real, just because I'd be interested to hear. I just like to know why people believe the things that they believe in. I'm not here to tell you not to believe in things. I am just here to share with you the scientific evidence of whether or not it's real and then have a discussion. You are still free to believe in whatever you want to believe, but like I said, just don't let it take over you so that other people get hurt. And no matter where you are, what you're doing, I hope that you're all having a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous day. Like, share, sub if you haven't yet. Think of joining the fabulous, amazing members all of the beautiful people do, and you don't want to be ugly like Bigfoot. <laughs> Is that ape ever... I mean, he ain't sexy, okay? You wouldn't go out on a date with him. Don't even give me that. I will see you all very, very, very soon. Take care. Mwah. Bye! He cameth, he saweth, and he conquereth. Do the Bigfoot dance. Okay, sorry, I'm done. I think we got the picture. Uh, this here, this is Bigfoot. Mm -hmm.